Do you wave your terrible towel when Renegade plays? Reach for a tasty cake when JJ shouts, he scores! Does the sound of an F1 engine make your heart race? Doing push-ups with the Nittany Lion after a TD? Then lend us an ear, and we will share the exhilaration of Steelers football, the excitement of Flyers hockey, the nail-biting finishes of F1, and the pride when we yell, we are Penn State. Welcome to the Steel Flyers Show, the strangest combination of sports fandom since pineapple was put on pizza. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. We got a very special show lined up for you today, folks. That's right. We're sitting here with the great, great, great Perlo Wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom. How you doing, Perlo? Uh, good, man. It's good. Yeah. Lots, lots of playoff hockey. It's been a great year so far. Exactly. Now you know, we got a couple people didn't make it <laughs> exactly teams, you know a couple, couple teams got eliminated and you know it's funny that that you mentioned that because we've both been watching a lot of playoff hockey and we've been um taking notice to quite a few things that have happened um in the last two nights uh and we've had a few teams eliminated and we're going to call this the eliminator series OK, um, we're going to pile up all the teams that got eliminated and we're going to talk about potentially what they are going to do, what they need to do and why they may be lost. Mm -hmm. OK, so the, the first one we, I think we have to address is the one that happened the most recent. OK, okay and that's the New York Islanders scoring two goals in 13 seconds to pretty much take the penguins out and drop the number one seed is now out of the playoffs for the second year in a row they are out of the playoffs um in the first round last year they didn't even make the first round the previous year they were dropped out of the first round they've lost the last 16 playoff games to lose i mean they're they're they just have not been winning in the playoffs. Well, they've lost in the first round the last three years. That's what I mean. So, you know, when you lose like that in the, in the first round, that, that makes it kind of tough, especially – now, you actually have to go four years. Yeah, because, last year was, I think, even a worse one. They lost a month. Th but that's what I mean, right? But, but that wasn't – they didn't make the playoffs. They just qualified for the qualifier. Actually, Montreal – didn't Montreal – did both of them they just beat qualify? Them. Montreal, yeah, yeah the Montreal was one of the qualifiers, oh, yeah, and yeah. they beat them. Yeah, and then they were the ones that allowed to move on, and Pittsburgh was not. Yeah, and Montreal had a worse team than they had this year. And they, exactly, they I think so too. I agree. Oh, I agree. Although Price did play last time, it's the last time he played, played really played. well. Yeah, he played really well last year in the playoffs, it's the especially. Only time in two years that Price played really up to close Agreed. to standard. Yeah. I agree. I agree. But. So now uh, the Islanders, uh, the fourth seed, are now moving on to play uh, the Boston Bruins, who eliminated the Washington Capitals, which that's the other team we're going to talk about, too. And we could actually uh, do the combination as well, too, because Florida was eliminated and St. Louis has been eliminated as well. Yeah, too. We'll, do, we'll do those next We'll time. do those. Trust me, we have enough to talk about here, okay? This is the Eliminator series. So yeah. um, uh, the, the first two teams we're going to talk about is the uh, the uh, Pittsburgh uh, Penguins and the Islanders, and they were eliminated last evening. Uh, the score was 5-2, to two, yeah. or 5-3. to three, I'm sorry, 5-3. to three. Uh -huh. And the Islanders looked like their Islander self. I mean, even though they've been kind of missing Lee, they've been playing um, a, a bit of a, they've been playing up to Pittsburgh. Okay. Yeah. And the sad thing about Pittsburgh in this series is that their big names did not step up. You didn't hear a lot of, from Crosby. You didn't hear a lot from Malkin, even though Malkin missed a game or two during the series. But all you really heard was, was from Jeff Carter. You know what I mean? You didn't really hear much from Rusk. You didn't really hear much from Gensel. You didn't really, I mean, that whole line throughout the whole year with Crosby, they, every one of them guys had over 20 goals, right? And they sort of disappeared here in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, from what I was seeing with Crosby, he's injured. Okay. He's not playing in the areas yeah. that he normally plays. Okay. So, he was all right. playing very perimeter. 
He wasn't getting into I know one time he did, if you noticed last night, you're watching that game, see how long it took him to get up from that? Yeah, that yeah. did take a little bit longer. Yeah, that looked like back. He's got some back issues or something going on there. He doesn't look good. Okay. All right. Yeah. Because he just hasn't looked right at all this whole no. series. No. You know, I'd say I'm, back or hip or I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but he's, right. he's not he's not getting up like he normally does. He doesn't have that right. same spark. And he's playing way perimeter. Like, when does Crosby play perimeter ever? Like, right. Unless, and he, unless he's hurt. But he also didn't have very many points. He didn't have much. He didn't show up on the score sheet yeah. very much. And, and if, his, if he's not, if he's injured, that whole line is, what's rust without Crosby? If he's on any True. other team, what's rust without Crosby? Okay. I mean, yeah. I, I get it. I get it. If you put those two guys that Crosby was with on his line and any other line, would they be that good? No. Would they score that many goals? Probably Unless not. Unless it's like McDavid or somebody. Well, or, or Dreisaitl. Somebody or, equally or, as uh, yeah, 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 awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, we're talking about what's gonna, what's Pittsburgh going to do now. I yeah. So now what are they going to do now? Because they, they hired Hextall. They brought him in to basically, I guess, retool, I guess. If if you don't want to use the, the rebuild word, you have to do the retool word or re-something word because well, let's face will. it. They will right. Because let's face it, um, the Islanders figured out Jari rather quickly. Yeah. Okay. And he uh, was exposed. He was horrible. He was horrible. Highly exposed. I'm sorry, but every goalie that I've talked to that's played, and I've talked to one that's played in the NHL and one that hasn't, and every one of them said, so what's your strong suit? Glove side. Yeah. Okay. So if glove side is your strong, how is that? Well, that didn't qual that didn't really take into account for Jari because that's not he his doesn't strong have suit. An well, I mean, let's let me put it this way: Jari did. He is ever since Murray left and he was left out on for his own. It just I think it got into his head. Uh, he wasn't psychologically ready to be a number one goal donor. I think that's the problem, and okay. unfortunately, I think doing that might have might ruin him. It might. It might. They, but they, they, it might ruin him completely. I've seen, we've seen it happen with other goaltenders that have been put in, True. in those spots. Murray, Murray. I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, he had to get away from Pittsburgh though, and, yeah, and he didn't have a great season in Ottawa. There was injuries and all that kind of stuff like that. But I think Murray came from a different perspective. Murray got too big in his head and thought he yeah. was the greatest thing since sliced bread. But and see, then, Murray also had flurry. So, and he, yeah, exactly. And he had flurry. Here's this poor Jari guy, whose mentor is a guy who's been who is struggling off himself, and now you're going to make him a number one. Like I love the skill of Jari, but it's a mental game, right? We've seen it with our with uh, in Philly. It's a mental game, and, and I don't. I think the Pittsburgh has made a big mistake. Big mistake. With these goaltending, yeah, I'm with you on that. You know, they really. Uh, this is another reason why I think Hextall was brought in because I think he's going to find them a goalie that's going to be. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's get to the checklist. Then. <laughs> first things first. Uh, okay. Let's look at what Pittsburgh's likely going to do. Look, historically speaking, like you said, a stripped down rebuild is pretty much out of the question. Ownership yeah. doesn't seem to want anything to do with that. Right. So and you bring in a guy, and their money situation is not going to allow for that either. Right, a stripped down rebuild. Yeah. You, uh, uh, well, I mean, the people you have to trade to get the assets for would be difficult. That's what I mean. But so you're not going to be able to. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do a full rebuild the way you want to because you're going to have to have people that are going to need to be moved and or you're going to have to worry about money and contracts well, you can you're just not going to get much back so you're going to suck for a long time like if, if pittsburgh wants to do this they're going to not be good for a very long time i would say unless some hextall does something magical which i think he was on the road to doing in philadelphia pretty darn good he was doing a fairly quick rebuild in philadelphia before they let him go. Uh, 
And uh, so I think that's the reason why they hired Hextel is they saw that he was able to identify young talent that was almost ready now rather than just getting first and being able to do that. And he waited for markets to open up and he was timing was really good. Let's face it, I mean, he did a great job in Philadelphia. Do you know, here's another thing that I'm thinking too. He might actually be trying to pluck some cross state players. Know what I mean? Uh, because he drafted a lot of the guys that the Flyers are looking to potentially either move on from or Maybe. try to get some value for I some of the guys. Patrick another chance. Right. I could see him doing that. Right. Okay. If, they, if he figures he knows what makes him tick, and they have people in there that are. Gonna or, get or if another player becomes available for Philadelphia, that was one of his picks. I'm sure he would give them high consideration. Sure. A la Sandheim. A la Sandheim or somebody. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, I, I don't know why Philadelphia would. No, but I mean, I'm just saying. With, I'm just saying your, if. Yeah, but I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm sure he'll look at all aspects. I was really impressed with what Exal did. So we look at, at their roster though. What are, what are they going to do? You said the first thing is a goaltending. No doubt about it. Uh, I don't think they're getting out of that Jari contract right now. So whatever goaltender they're going to get, they got to get a goaltender that can work with him. I'm, I, I seriously think the first thing they're going to do is call Vegas and see if Vegas will now cover some of that. I don't know how they're going to be able to do it. Cover some of that flurry contract. I think it's possible. Or... Even, how about this, straight across, Latang for Fleury. Latang has only got one year left. Fleury's making about the same amount of money. The only chance Pittsburgh has right now, as far as I'm concerned, is if they grab a goaltender that can save their butt. That okay. Something uh, like that. I could see Pittsburgh doing something like that. Yeah, Jari signed until 23. Yeah, and how much is he making? Three, Three million. And a half. Three, Three and, and a half. half. That's about you know. Then you're you're throwing ten million dollars next year at goaltenders. But if anybody, if if there was ever a year that shows how the value of goaltenders, it's this year. They're gonna have. They got. Malkin is only signed until next year. At nine point yeah. five, right? Crosby signed until. 25. Uh, Gensel signed until 24. Mm -hmm. Zucker signed until 23. How much is he uh, making? 5.5. Yep. Might, might be able to do some of that. Contract. Brandon Tanev is, is slated to go to 25. He's making 3.5. He's, he's not going anywhere. Well, Brian Rust uh, is making 3.5, and, and he's available. He has. He has one year left on his deal at 3.5. Yeah, I don't think that would be a wise to trade that either. And Kapanen has one more year left on his deal at 3.2. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then they got uh, Jared McCann, and then Jeff Carter has one more year as well, too. After that, everybody else is, needs to be re-signed. And then they can they can then from that see where they are at that point. That's why I think they're going to go one more year to try to give her a shot. And if things aren't looking good, then then the tang is signed until the tang is signed until twenty twenty two. Yeah. Uh, La Tang's contract is tradable. He's still putting up good points at thirty four years old. That's a tradable contract. Now maybe it's not flurry, but I think you got to look at. Latang getting Latang getting a goaltender and a pick or something like that from somewhere. They or I don't know. There could be goaltenders falling off the tree pretty good here because uh, the good news for them is the expansion draft is coming up and everybody has to protect one goaltender. So that leaves one goaltender out, right? So there's going to be a lot of goaltenders on the market right now, and if they're really smart, they might be able to pick up one at a pretty decent price, I guess. But I wouldn't want to be screwing around with it. I'd be looking at like Darcy Kemper or somebody like anything. Yeah, anything would be better because now Doomlin, Latang, um, Tanev, Zucker, Crosby, and Malkin are the are the ones that have no movement clauses. So those will be the ones that Pittsburgh is going to protect. 
complete no movement clauses, or is it? Uh, well, I, I Malkin like and Crosby have no movement clauses, and then Zucker and Tanev have uh, limited, limited. No yeah, movement and then the same thing with Latang, and the same thing with Dumlin. Yeah, so Latang, yeah, we Latang has an eighteen team can trade to list. Right, but see now, here's the thing: you start trading away some of these core pieces. Mm -hmm. And now you're not winning. I mean, you're you're not keeping the core together to keep winning. Then. No, oh, I think. Well, okay, this is now that you brought this up. I think what this is what they're gonna do. I'm just going by what Pittsburgh is and has done. I like they're not gonna do a a, a rebuild like that, at, or at least they're gonna do everything they can to not do a complete. Tear down, rebuild for the next five. That's what six I mean. Years. They really can't, and they have. They have very. They have almost no cap space. Yeah, but they will, and that's what I'm saying. Is okay after next year, like you said, you got Brian Rust either coming off the books or has to be resigned, right? Yeah. Jeff Carter will be off the books after uh, next year. After next year, uh, he's only doing ten six because LA is covering it, or two six because LA is covering two six. Right yeah. Now. Evgeny Malkin is going to be the interesting one. He's 35 years old. At the very least, if they do resign him, it's not going to be a nine and a half. So that they'll have, they'll maybe maybe half of that if you're lucky. Do you know what? To be honest with you, I think that we might have seen the last of Malkin in Pittsburgh. I don't. I, I uh, from what I understand, of course, they say this all the time. He's got a complete no movement clause. If they ask him to be traded, he's going back to Russia. That's what I, you know, those those are just words. They can change really quick. They can say whatever they want to say. Basically, him saying he doesn't want to leave. He has no interest in leaving. Well, uh, so then if that's going to be the case, to say something like that to do that. if that's going to be the case, then you're going to have to take a little bit more of a friendlier deal than nine yeah. five. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what that's. Yeah, at that time, two years from now, what's Malkin going to look like? I think he probably can get four million, something like that. And okay, so yeah, and you have Chris Letang right now. They can trade Chris Letang for a decent. And I think he's likely, definitely gone. Uh, so you think with that, is more gone than Malkin? Yes. Okay. Yes, I do because Malkin. I think Letang will take that trade better than Malkin will. Uh, and he's also Malkin's making nine and a half million. It's pretty difficult, and they they're not going to want to retain anything because of cap issues. They they're looking right. to get they as can't. much cap space as they possibly can this year. Yeah, because they get, have not get a goaltender and uh, well, another defenseman that's cheaper than Chris Letang, and go for it again with whatever they have left. I think that's what they're going to do. Uh, okay, well, if you're going to do that, then let's see here. Uh, Yannick Weber is needs to be re-signed. Cody Cece needs to be re-signed. Uh, Rodriguez, Janikowski, and uh, Frederic Goudreau will need to be re-signed. Yeah. Uh, Bluger, uh, Zorhan, uh, wow. Bjorkwest, O'Connor, uh, and Colton will all need to be re-signed for next year. Sevier will either take a minimum league minimum or go somewhere else. Uh, Aston Reese, that'll be interesting. He's a restricted free agent. He really has no leverage at all. But they will have to sign him to at least uh, a million dollars. Um, uh, uh, Teddy Bluger, Bluger will be again same thing. He has nothing to. He's might make a little bit of a raise and that's it. Frederick right. Goudreau, uh, that, uh, if, let's put it this way. If I'm somebody out there right now, Frederick Goudreau is a guy I'm putting, he, he was a, he's a late bloomer and he looks really good. He probably is going to get priced out of Pittsburgh. Uh, 700,000. 
he's yeah. making and he needs to be resigned. He, he doesn't have, he's a, he's a UFA. Yeah. And I think somebody out there is going to give him a million plus. And I think that's going to price him out of Pittsburgh. Uh, Jankowski I better be happy with getting league minimum because he did nothing. So, and then Yvonne Rodriguez, that'll be interesting too. So they yeah. got a lot of interesting things to do there in Pittsburgh, but I really think they'll just sign whoever they can. Uh, and really think, I think they're going to tell themselves goaltending was our problem. If we solve our goaltending, we'll give it another shot. That's what I think they're going to do. That and makes a lot halfway, of sense. And then halfway through the year, they're going to go, we got, we'll have more cap space, not the trade deadline. They'll do what they always do. They'll add some more pieces for wherever they think they need it and okay. give it another shot. And I think that shot will end up being pretty much what it did, what it's been the last three years. Yeah, and then you. maybe, maybe then we'll start hearing the rebuild words start. To come okay. Out. All right. So now I guess the next team that got eliminated was the Washington Capitals. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the Boston Bruins kind of made short work of that. Yeah. That's funny. I had them in five too. I, I, I didn't think they were going to do well. Um, but, and, you know, that was another game, too, where and then I think this had a lot to do with the way Boston played, but the big guns in Washington didn't show up. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Ovechkin and I, was barely on the score sheet. Oshie yeah. was barely on the score sheet. Mantha completely disappeared. Yep. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't think, yeah, I think they could be in trouble with Anthony Mantha. Next year is going to be a huge year for him. I mean, when if Stevie Y trades a 25 year old guy who is supposed to be a projected 40 goal scorer, there's probably a problem. <laughs> probably a problem. <laughs> Stevie Y is an absolute genius. He never yeah. makes. He hardly ever makes any mistakes. Yeah. And uh, like I, I, it's a red flag. If if I'm talking to Stevie Y and he's saying, you know, how about Anthony Mantha? I'm like, yeah, what's wrong with him? <laughs> It's but the they, he pick. got a number one pick for him, though. I know. He got huge. I so, think that trade could end up. Brada, I mean, has been hungry to move up a lineup. Um, you know, he showed a lot of character not asking out of Washington before he did because they were playing him low minutes for a long time there. Yeah. And he ended up taking lower contracts to stay there. So he showed a lot of character, right? And what does Stevie Y like, right? Character. Yeah. Right. And Anthony Mantha. Maybe he hasn't been showing the character. That he <laughs> Apparently so, not, because he's not well, with Detroit anymore. Detroit so. could end up being really bad. I see. Yeah, I, that's what I think too. I think that's it's going to bode really well for for Detroit, mm -hmm. but not so well for uh, for Washington. You know, look, I was I was not surprised at all, and we talked about this in, in the last couple of shows. How you come into the playoffs with momentum, which is what Boston did. And Washington looked hurt. They were hobbling in. Ovechkin didn't didn't even play in the last couple of games, or he played in the last game, but was hurt going in. You know what I mean? I think he's hurt still now. You know, you're, yeah. you're not going to hear, you know, because he didn't show up either. I think they had a, a problem and a, uh, just a problem in the room in general in Washington, and they have for a bit. Uh, and... Um, well, Kuznetsov, who looks like he's definitely going to be traded, uh, seems to be at the part of the heart of the issue from the outside looking in. I don't have any inside information on that, but, you know, just from the appearances, uh, there's been a lot of issue, issues with him. He had a party. And <laughs> he doesn't yeah. look like the sharpest knife in the drawer to be getting caught. <laughs> okay. To, to, to allowing people to take pictures of him while he's surrounded by cocaine, you know, he's pretty lucky he got away with what he got away with. And, and yeah. And yeah. He makes some, you know, just because I'm around cocaine doesn't mean I'm doing it. Okay. But the fact that you allow people to take pictures of you while you're around cocaine makes me think you're probably doing it or yeah. something because that's something. pretty stupid. Okay. Uh, that, anyways. That's definitely for sure, you know, and here's the other thing too, and. Seven point eight million dollars until twenty twenty five. Yeah, is what his contract is, and that is just whoa. So they're probably going to have to sell relatively low on Kuznetsov. I think they'll be lucky to get a first round pick or something like that after and everything. They're going to have to eat. 
they're going to have to eat because there's no way you can that 7.8 for that amount of time. Uh, uh, looking at it, like some places that he could go, uh, uh, Columbus is looking for. center but i think they're in a, in a tear down so i don't think they're gonna do that but um well they're also looking for a new coach too so i mean you never know yeah. you, you never know who coaches are going to try and put together teams and stuff like that because in i mean there's you know, um, you know who's going to take them absolutely no doubt about it you know who's going to take them sorry about that to jump all over you no no almost for sure almost for sure the Montreal Canadiens are going to take them. They love their troubled Russians. They freaking got them all. They 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 took them all. They <laughs> every all right. single one of them like that but are you know like what though that actually that makes a lot of sense. Kovalchuk because they need a veteran center. I don't know like if he's the guy that you want to have as a veteran, but I mean, okay. So look, here's the big elephant in the room here, and we've all. Heard it, seen it, talked about it. Ovechkin came out and ba basically squashed the rumors. Oh, is he yeah. coming back? Is he coming back? Yeah. This was his last year of his contract. Yeah. He says he wants to come back. The team yeah. says that he wants, they want to re-sign him, but... Yeah. He, um, um, Similar to Pittsburgh, I think this is what they'll do. They get what they can for, for Kuznetsov. Uh, and now, okay... They got Anthony Mantha, who's 26 years old and he's making $5 million a year. So, uh, for whatever reason, they didn't want Verana in that spot. I'm thinking it's positional. Um, Mantha's a left winger. I believe Verana was a right winger. So, I thought there would be a left winger available. Who normally plays? Oh, it's Oshi. They're not trading Oshi. No, no he's oh, she's right. He's the, oh, she's she's the right, right winger. Um, it's, no, he uh, did replace Verana, so I, I'm not really sure weird about that. I thought maybe they got Manta for positional reasons so they could trade somebody out so they could get some more cap room, but... No, they, they brought him in to play that position. Hmm. You know they are. Yeah, that that's really the Here's the that's thing, a, though, with Washington, they have zero money to play with. Well, after the, they trade Kuznetsov, they'll have some money. Right. Play. The only players that need to be re-signed for next year is Ovechkin, and Chara, and uh, Paul Ledoux. That's it. And Ovechkin's going to sign for last. And Anderson, Anderson is is also a Uf, UFA as well too. But Vanacek is signed till twenty twenty two. Yeah, Anderson's going to retire. Uh, Chara, you give him a league minimum if he wants to play. Uh, Which yeah. is what he got this year, seven hundred ninety five thousand. Now that, but that was prorated because it was a small, uh, shorter season. He might want a little more than that. I don't know, but maybe not. Uh, but Ovechkin will get. He said he. Uh, I, by the sounds of the way he's talking, he's he's willing to go like half of the salary. He's so they they might have four. If they get rid of if they lose Kuznetsov and you bring back like say half of that, that gives them eight million to work with for another center. So, uh, uh, wait, hold on. So if you you get rid of Kuznetsov, right? That's seven point eight, mm -hmm. and you sign Ovechkin for five. Mm -hmm. That only leaves you three. No, if you lose Kuznetsov and you only, I don't know if they're going to have to. I don't they think they have gonna, this much right gonna. now. They have this much right now. If you lose Kuznetsov, now you have $7.8 million that you can spend. You spend five of that on Ovechkin. Now that only gives you $3 million, and you still got to bring in another oh, center. No. I don't look at it that way because Ovechkin was making nine and a half. So if you sign him for five, you got four and a half to work with. If you lose Kuznetsov, you've got uh, twelve point something million to work with. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, sure. because he counted so, nine and a half on the books from last year. Right. He's only counting for four or five million this year. Mm -hmm. And okay, so that still gives you. Let's see. 
10 million, 11 million. Yeah. And now if I'm them, what I would do is I would entertain putting TJ Oshie back in the middle again. Yep. And then it's easier to find wingers and then find a filler winger to put on those that spot because I think their biggest problem is on defense. They I really am not a fan of their I don't think Justin Schultz is Yeah. And he's making four goal. million. Nick right? Jensen. And Dylan yeah. is making three nine. Jensen's making two point five. Yeah. Reemsdyke is doing. I mean, he's got eight 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 hundred thousand this year, and then nine hundred and fifty thousand the next two years. So I mean, Brendan he's Dylan a cheap had a really deal. good year. I, I like yeah, he did. And and I think Carlson had a pretty decent year too. Yeah, he had his normal year. He's, he's right. Crazy. And Orloff didn't have too bad of a year. I don't think he's progressed as good as much as I thought he would. I agree. He, I he's agree. been on the decline ever since they won the cup. He, he's been going downhill. And, and that's he's really 29. He'll be 30. Yeah, right? yeah. He'll be 30 at 5.1 million. He might be another one that could potentially be on the block for them too. You know what I mean? To try yeah. to get some. Because, look, they need to re-sign Ovechkin. They need to bring in another center and or winger, depending on if you move Oshie or not. Either way, you still need another forward, right, to come in and take over that spot. And yeah. you you need uh, to either replace Chara or re-sign Chara, well, and you need a better backup goalie. Uh, I think Vanacek is fine as a backup as long as all he is is a backup. Like, you don't want to play him too, too much. Uh, and what you really got to cross your fingers on is Samsonov doesn't get injured anymore and progresses. That's really the big thing for them. Because okay. if he doesn't progress, they're in, they're in big trouble. Now no matter they, what they do, they're in big trouble. Right. Now, they are they are going to potentially get, um, what is it, uh, uh, Michael uh, Kempney is going to be, on, yeah, he's, he's on long term. He's with right. Her. Right. And then they got the one Lundquist. Kid. Lundquist is actually a UFA after this season. So yeah. at the end of yeah, so I mean, yeah, I don't whether, know what they're going to do. Whether he comes with. back next year, I mean, he's been talking about that. They they yeah. can go back to whatever they were doing. They've got Connor McMichael, who how did he do in the AHL? That's top for centers. I, that's what I think. I don't think they're going to add another center. He had 27 points in 33 games as a 20-year-old in the AHL. That's pretty good. Uh, you know, they could give him a good shot. Uh, I think that's what they'll do. I think they'll work with what they got in their minor league system, see if they can fill that center hole that Kuznetsov is leaving. And then if it doesn't work out in the, at the trade deadline, maybe they look at something like their, that. Their first-round draft pick uh... – Hendrick Lapierre, uh, Lapierre um, could oh, potentially yeah. Yeah, be that. Yeah, well, that, I don't, I don't think he, because of Not, the injury when he was drafted. Yeah. He had 31 points in 21 games in the QMHL this year. That's not great. That's not great for in the Q. That's not really knocking it out of the park. I think he's going to need a year to, uh, to recuse. That injury was pretty brutal. So yeah, he, he okay. He need to but I mean, he is he is potentially the somewhere, future for them. Somewhere, somewhere down the road, hopefully. Right. Yeah. yeah, but he is potentially the future for them. Yeah, it was a nice pickup late late first that they gave yeah. him a shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's what I think they're gonna. They're, I think what I'm using the word a lot here. I think they're rolling the dice a lot with some things here. Ilya Samsonov is only 24 years old. I mean, yeah. Old. Right, so yeah. he's done very well as long as he can stay. Healthy. But he's he's a restricted free agent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I mean, because of everything that's happened, they're not gonna. He's not gonna be demanding too much money. Uh, you're right, though, with Vanacek, it would be good to get a, a veteran to help out Samsonov if Lundqvist isn't coming back. But that shouldn't be too expensive either. Um, Especially with uh, the expansion draft now coming up, you like I said before, with Pittsburgh, there's going to be some goalies falling off the tree and available. So that shouldn't be too difficult to do. But with their
twelve million that they have after they sign Ovechkin to what I figured he might sign for, and uh, if they do uh, trading Kuznetsov, maybe getting somebody back from that, that you know will be a little bit. I would personally not worry about your forwards. I'd be looking at trying to add something on the D. Uh, and uh, well, they they have to protect. Uh... Backstrom, Oshi, Ovechkin, even Kuznetsov is on the with a now he does have a limited um, no trade. Oh, clause. I think I, I think they could. Well, there, there's right. a way to solve the problem and get rid of your cap space. See if Seattle will take him. Does, does, he, he, have a, does he have a no trade clause? Or yes. Does, does he have yes. a no movement clause? Though? He has a no, he has a a, a, a limited. And then okay. it has a no trade clause. Okay, no trade clauses. You 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 have to protect them. So right. They can they can be unprotected. So they could. Well, the no movement clause. The no movement clause is you have to protect, but the no trade clause. Right. That's right. That's right. Right. Yeah. So I don't Baxter, think they're gonna have a problem with their protection list on it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't either. Yeah. But there's somebody that could be plucked. From that list, that potentially they can't. I would say I would leave Kuznetsov off, and that would solve the problem. I'm well, he at. unfortunately, because of his no movement clause or no trade clause, he has to be one of the ones that's protected. No, he doesn't. He has a um, 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 he doesn't have a no movement clause. He has a no trade clause, so he doesn't have to be protected. Okay. And you have if you have a no movement clause, you have to protect them. But if you have okay. a no trade clause, you don't. Okay, I so, wasn't sure about what that this was. This isn't a trade. That's the true. Way yeah, that's true. It's not a trade. I'm I'm taking this player off of your team, and he's yeah. coming to my team. There's no trade right. happening here. You're not getting anything back from me. I'm just taking right. this player. The players' <laughs> union or whatever came up with this idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, he's going to have to. I, I they might leave him off unless they can trade him before the expansion draft, which is possible too. Somebody right. might pick him up before the expansion draft. It's going to make that a very difficult trade because whoever picks him up. That means they have to. That's one more person that they have to. Because yeah. if they pick them up, they're going to protect them, right? So exactly. that's one more player team that <laughs> it's going to make it very, very difficult. I would just I leave agree. them off. If they happen to take them, then okay, you took the full seven, eight off your books and your work on your defense. If they don't take them, then you can trade them afterwards and do whatever the case may be. Right, because two days later is going to be the uh, the draft anyway. So yeah. Well, there you have it, folks. We talked about the uh, first. Uh, we, we talked about some teams that have been eliminated so far. We're going to continue this series called the Eliminator Series, where we talk about the teams that have been eliminated from playoffs and what exactly they're going to do in this off season, and maybe how they lost and how they could potentially get back to contention. So we were joined by the great Pearl of Wisdom. Thank you very much for hopping on here, buddy. No problems. Yeah, man, we got to talk about some great hockey, as always. This is the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Thank you very much for joining us. Just remember, folks, stay strong, stay safe, and hang tough. Yeah. Take care.